Hello, this is Oil Katongo Kawanda, your management and leadership advisor. So we had a question from uh, a number of people who are actually in employment and they're asking, how do we get to keep the job? So you have been talking about how to get a job. Uh, now we really want to hear how we get to keep a job. Well, we will discuss this matter in this, in, in this video. And uh, thank you so much for all the questions that keep on coming. As we've been discussing um, during our workshops and trainings, um, we'll keep uh, sharing more and more information on this platform. So please ensure that you hit the subscribe button and uh, follow us on all the social media platforms on LinkedIn, on TikTok and uh, Facebook, uh, even here on YouTube. So what we'll be doing is to tackle uh, different issues of employment and business and uh, we try to see how best we can get the best out of the employment relationship so uh, for these colleagues that have been asking uh, for you have been asking about what exactly do you need to do uh, for you to keep the job that you have found um, first of all as we have said in so many other platforms it's congratulations uh, for 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 getting a job uh, it is not easy uh, to get a job and that's why it's a good thing that you're being proactive by actually asking how you can keep the job because there are so many people out there who really don't have a job and it's it's important that you 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 sit in a particular place where you you you, are, you start to think about your life and ask serious questions on how best you can really work with your employers uh, in order to really get the best out of your employment relationship and also just how you ensure that you're keeping these jobs because sometimes you get a job and because of what you do at the workplace you end up you know uh, being fired which is not something that is desirable because that now disrupts a lot of your plans it's always a nice thing that you plan out everything you work well and it is you as an employee who actually decides to leave rather than the employer uh, being the one to to dismiss you so um let's start looking at uh, the key things now uh, keep watching several of our other videos because we'll be tackling a lot of issues around um, as we've said before for you students we will be talking to job seekers and we'll be talking to employees uh, like yourselves who have been asking these questions we'll also talk to you know managers and supervisors and directors as well as business owners on the various issues that affect uh, employees and employers in the workplaces so on the matter of how do you keep a job the starting point is first of all to understand who is an employee that's number one who exactly is an employee so there are so many definitions of employees depending on your school thought or what your grade but key to it is we go with what the law says if you're operating in zambia um go to section uh, three of the employment code act number three of 2019 that will give you a, a clear definition of who, who an employee is and an employee um, under this law is defined as someone who in return for a wage gives a service it's a very simple basic basic definition but of course this excludes the you know the the contractors and so on we are basically talking about someone who enters into a contract of service and remember i'm saying the contract of service in return for a wage now we will be talking about these differences in terms of contracts. What does a contract of service actually mean? What does a contract for service mean? What does a wage mean? What is, does a commission mean? And all these kind of things, um, because they are, they are defined differently. For purposes of our discussion today, we will be focusing on just that definition that you need to understand that the moment you sign a contract of service or a contract of employment, you become and an employee and now let's be very clear and, and we try to to emphasize this because sometimes you join a company and you want to consider yourself as a consultant or, or, or an agent or a contractor and things of that nature please read the contract that you signed if the contract you signed is a contract of service that is a keyword contract of just underline the word of if it is a contract of service, then it means you're an employee. It also means that your payments um, will be considered through your payroll. 
It means also your earnings, your income will also be treated under the pay as you earn uh, when it comes to the taxes. Whereas if you were a consultant doing almost very close to the same job, you, your, your payment will be uh, a consultant's fee, which will be subjected to uh, withholding tax or any other applicable taxes. So it's important to understand what is it that you have entered into. So we believe that there's no ambiguity, there's no problem of you identifying yourself as an employee. And once you identify yourself as an employee, because you entered into a contract of service or contract for employment, it therefore means now that you need to ask yourself serious questions. If you are an employee, definitely there is an employer. And the two parties, the employee and the employer, enter into a relationship, and that is a relationship called the employment relationship. Now, this relationship will have, like any other relationship, will have to be, um, you know, developed and nurtured, and you have to have boundaries, and, and it will have parameters on how the two parties will be operating, and how they will treat each other, and things of that nature. And that's why we keep on emphasizing the first starting point should be you understanding that you're an employee. Once you understand that you're an employee, then it helps you in regulating yourself, knowing what you can do and what you can't do. Because we have also seen some situations where people, you know, you come for work, somebody like they are being pushed, or there are times when people, you know, because they know this person or that person in the company or outside the company, they become almost untouchable. You shouldn't fall into such traps. And we'll be going into details of what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. The key thing is understand clearly what an employee is. Who is an employee? So once this is very clear, and we talked about you entering into a contract or an agreement with the employer, and this could be verbal, uh, most ideally, and as advised, it is usually uh, supposed to be in writing if it is above the six months. Because you are an employee, it's important again to understand the next level that being an employee, the law has given powers to the employer. The employer is the one who is paying you for the service that you are providing. What the law has given in terms of the powers, again, you can refer to section three of the, of, of the employment code. The employer will work with you and the, the employer has been empowered to give you instructions and to control. So in the employment relationship, the employee works under the instructions and control of the employer. It's, it's important to understand this. Now, we, we are not talking about things which are done outside the, the, the laws. We're talking about what the law provides. And so what this means is that the, the employer, even we will talk about uh, another topic later on uh, in our various uh, videos we'll be posting on how we actually can reach a point of determining that this person is an employee or is a contractor uh, or a consultant and we, we, we draw that line. Key thing is what we're saying as an employee, you would have agreed to work under the instruction and control of the employer. And what means is you, you will work with a particular agreement. The employer tells you the time that you're supposed to work and that is for instance, in many countries, you may find um, maybe 8 to 17 or whatever time that may be provided, depending on where you're operating from. Um, the employer determines the time that they expect you to, to work and you are also committing that you're going to be available. This is what is very clear in the law. You commit that you're going to be available and the employer will also give you work tools. Then also on top of that, being an employee, we, talk, we are still talking about what the law provides. You are also agreeing that the employer will give you the place where you are going to work from. That means if you are hired to work in a particular office, if at some point the employer, because of changes in the operational needs of the business, the employer now says, will require you to work in another, in, in another place, you are also agreeing that you will move. The only thing that is the employer now is required to do is, of course, to give you 
to inform you that you need to go and operate from a particular other location or branch because that is where now where your services are needed ideally you go into these discussions and the employer will then um, meet the cost of you know your relocation to the place where they have sent you to work from um, and at the time you finish working where they have sent you they also again meet the cost of uh, your repatriation the law is very clear uh, around this matter so uh, the key issue is that you being an employee you would have understood that you are working under the instruction and control of the employer and this doesn't matter because sometimes people start to think no okay because I've worked so long in this company or now I'm a, I'm a manager or I'm a director. No matter what position you hold, you are still an employee. And it's important to understand because sometimes, you know, when, especially when you, when you are going higher in, in, in positions, you start to, you know, to feel now, because of course you are wearing another hat of being an employer. The law is very clear also because when you're in management, you're also an employer. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that on the other side, you should always remember that you're an employee. And this is why we're saying it's important that you clearly understand what relationship will exist between you and your employer. That is the person or the institution that signed um, and gave you that contract of employment. And you have agreed to follow the instructions and be under the control of the employer. This is the first part. And once, once you clearly understand this, this is the beginning of you keeping your job. It is the beginning and the most important because it gives you the foundation of how then you are expected to behave and perform. Now we are coming to the second issue. The second issue after looking at the, the legal provisions of who an employee is, the second issue is that for you to keep a job, there are only two things that we, we, we talk about. They are simple. I normally call them the BP. It's the behavior and performance. The law, for instance, in Zambia, um, under section 52, will tell you capacity of the employee or conduct of the employee. Now, what does this mean? The expectation when you're an employee is that you're going to perform and you're going to behave according to the standards of that institution. Therefore, when you talk about performance, you are agreeing as an employee that you're going to perform in line with the standards of the institution. So the institution, for instance, at the beginning of the year or whichever period they give you targets to work towards, you cannot say, ah, I don't feel like I can do this. No. Discuss with your supervisor, make sure that your targets are, are, um, are, are realistic, um, then do your job. Sometimes there could be challenges. Sometimes it's a financial or other resources that you needed for you to carry out your job. But discuss with your supervisors because it's, only, it's in your interest that you perform your job. Because by simply entering into that agreement, into the contract of employment, you have committed yourself to work under the instructions of the employer. That is what you have committed yourself to. So you cannot, as an employee, wake up and say, no, I, I don't want to work like this. Of course, we are not talking about working in an environment which is toxic or working in, in, in harsh environments or working in a manner like, you know, you are not a human being. That's not what we are talking about. We are basically saying, that which is, uh, you know, practically or, or, or acceptable, the company or the institution or the employer gives you targets to work towards. And your job, therefore, mean, it remains for you to deliver on the targets that you have been given. So you need to sit down and ask yourself, how do I best work around achieving my targets? This is what is critical. If you need support, if you need to work with a particular team, you want to start thinking around how do you make sure that you achieve your target? Because at the end of the day, it, this is a commitment you made. The very moment you sign the contract and say that I've been an employee and you start drawing a salary, you have made a commitment that you're going to be working and performing in line with the standards of the institution. In certain companies, they might not even give you written you know, performance targets, but there's some general understanding 
that you are expected to do this, 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 this. And once there's that general understanding, you want to deliver according to that. And you also want to always check with your supervisors because sometimes certain things change and you, you may be working so hard on a particular project, but maybe the priorities of the institution have changed because of certain things that may happen be, uh, above your, your pay grade. So you always want to have these discussions. Um, take it upon yourself and be, be responsible, so to say. Don't, you shouldn't be waiting for someone to push you. We, you know, we see sometimes people, you report for work, you're just there, you know, drinking coffee or you're, you're there just reading the newspapers. Yet, you're supposed to be giving value to the employer. Just as the employer is also paying you. Of course, we can discuss the issues around, oh, what happens if I'm paid a, a very small salary or what happens when I'm, uh, I, I haven't even been paid for six months and things of that nature. Those are issues that we'll discuss in other videos. Uh, but for now, what is important is that the moment you committed yourself to joining this institution, whichever company you work for, whichever uh, organization you work for, you committed yourself to being a productive person. And what is important is really for you to put your, your, yourself forward and discuss with your supervisors and your company management to see how best you can do your job. At the end of the day, you should be able to draw some satisfaction from delivering on your, on your, on your, on your targets. This is on the side of performance. Now, there is a side of behavior. There are times that an employee can be a very good performer, high performer. You are meeting every target anything that you are given you are exceeding you are a top performer you're great now this is just one aspect and it's important to understand that it's just a single aspect there's another aspect which is the behavior side on the behavior side it, the expectation again is that you're going to behave in line with the standards or the requirements of the of, of, of your institution uh, again the company sets certain boundaries. If they have told you, don't come drinking, don't come late, don't come this, don't do this, there is an expectation that you're going to work in line with those standards that have been set for you. Again, behavioral issues become very critical for you to keep a job. You, as I mentioned before, you can be a top performer. However, if your behavior is below standard, there are certain, you know, ethics, there are certain behavioral standards which the company would have told you, but you're not doing them. And, and where if things are not clear, because we also know that in certain institutions, sometimes things might not be clear. Sometimes people are reporting and they're running and they're going to departments, they're working. Or other, in other institutions, they just really don't even hold like inductions or even supervisors helping uh, the individuals to understand what is expected. Feel free again to discuss with your supervisor, discuss with your HR, for them to help you understand what is really expected. Take it upon yourself. Normally, in, for instance, in certain institutions, the standards are well set, they are well, you know, employees are made aware, follow them. Where things may not be clear, feel free to discuss with the, with the supervisors, with your human resource uh, personnel in your company, uh, go to those professionals and ask them, okay, I just want to be clear. Uh, don't wait until something wrong starts to happen. You don't need to. Whenever you are told, look, you may also need to turn down on this, start adjusting because sometimes supervisors can sit down with you and tell you, look, you may need to change here and, there, and then you are there, look, you also want to behave like you own the company. It's not necessary. At the end of the day, you need to remember that you're an employee. And the very fact that you entered into a contract, that contract can also be terminated, which is the next thing that we want to talk about. So the law, when you read, in, uh, if you, as I've mentioned, uh, for those operating in Zambia, when you go to section uh, 50, uh, 52, it will give you guide that, of course, the employer cannot terminate your employment. Okay, without giving you, uh, without a valid reason. And the valid reasons that we have talked about is reason relating to capacity of conduct or operational uh, requirements. Now, operational requirements of the institution, um, that is the redundance that comes in, which we have tackled under 
uh, other videos. Now on this part, it is uh, termination relating to your performance and behavior. What this means is that, and the law is very clear, uh, so that is under section 52, subsection 2. When you go to section 52, subsection 3, it, would, it clearly indicates to you that you cannot have your, your contract terminated minus being, um, for the reasons relating to these two things, the, your, your capacity or conduct. Your contract cannot be terminated minus you being given, uh, without you being given a chance to be heard on the charges raised against you. What this means is that normally when you don't perform or behave in a manner that is acceptable to the institution, the company or through your supervisor will charge you and you know take you through the whole disciplinary process by, and give you an opportunity to be heard because this is part of uh, the rules of natural justice. So again, we are saying if for you to keep a job, you, you perform and you behave. Perform and behave. They are basically very simple, but they are also complicated. We are also advising, so we, we, we are also saying that um, should it ever happen that you have been found as an employee not to perform or behave in line with the requirements of the institution, ideally you expect that the company will give you some opportunity to behave because this is very important. And um, again, what is key when you're an employee is just really to work very well with your, with your, with your supervisors. Um, they should be, remember we spent, uh, as, as employees, you find that you spend a lot of time at, at work. So you don't want to be in this space where every morning you're waking up going for work. It's like a, it's like a crime. Like you are, you are so upset about the whole thing that you're waking up and going for work. Work should be enjoyable. If you work very well with your supervisors, with your, with your workmates, um, it, it becomes more or less like a team, like a family. Because at the end of the day, what you want is go into this workplace, all right, as an employee, go and do your job, do your job very well and be proud of what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, you should be seeing how, you know, your work contributes to the success of the institution that you're working for. This is what is very critical. You want to be looking at the work and being proud, no matter how small or big your position could be. You could be just a cleaner, but even in cleaning, you should be proud of what you're doing because at the end of the day, that job that you do is very important for the institution. You could be a general worker, a security guard, you could be a, a senior officer, you can be a manager or a director. Every job is extremely important. Each and every job is extremely important. And that's why we always emphasize that when you get a job, it's congratulations. We expect you now to apply yourself very well, work very well with, with, with other people. But also at the same time, we do encourage that you take good care of yourself. Because at the end of the day, there is aspects of health. You want to make sure that you find some, some balance. There are some, some jobs that can be very demanding, psychologically or physically. Uh, you always want to find a way to, 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 to balance yourself out, to find a way to, to be healthy at all times so that you can continue actually working and earning your, the money. Um, of course, when we have discussions with, uh, uh, with uh, um, the people in the business world, they will say, oh, well, why are you still working as an employee? It is better to be uh, earning money when, uh, in business. That is, again, a topic for another day. What is key is that when you're in employment, and we know that it's not everybody who would go into business. So when you're, in, when you're an employee, simply do your level best. It's extremely important you do your level best, but at the end of the day, and the most important thing is enjoy your work. Find a way to work well with supervisors, interact with your colleagues, share ideas, and basically see how your own efforts you know, contribute to the achievement of the, of the goals of, of, of your institution so that there's better um, you know, service delivery or you're making uh, uh, profits for the institution um, or the company that you're working for. So we really can only wish you really the best in your work and um, please hit the subscribe button and uh, make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms. And we always appreciate your feedback, the comments, the calls, the support, uh, the encouragement. 
it's really a great thing. Once again, this is all in Katongo Kabanda, your management and leadership advisor, wishing you the very best and uh, lots and lots of success in your work.